everyone thank you for joining me for another video if you are new to my channel welcome please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out whenever I upload new videos so this is my first video of 2018 and I just want to start off with positive thoughts by wishing everyone all the best for this new year I also want to thank everyone that follows my build and that has shown any positive support Thank you and I really appreciate all of it. So I know I've been slacking with uploading videos, but I have been super busy in the past couple of months. I was redoing the floors in my house, then I had family visiting, and then there was week best preparation. And I am so proud to say that my car won Honda of the Festival which is a really big award to receive. And I am super humbled and thankful that my hard work and dedication over the years that I put into my car was recognized. I really wanted to film all of the updates that I did uh, for week best preparation but I knew that I was gonna be limited on time with all of the things that I had to do, so I didn't even attempt to film anything. <laughs> I'm still new to the whole filming process, and it's been a challenge for me to find the time to set up the camera and move it around to get the right angles and change positions every time I'm moving around. I'm hoping for 2018 that I can improve on that and be better and you know, film everything that I'm doing so that I can have content to upload. So hopefully this year you'll be seeing a lot more videos from me. But I do have some videos um, planned and I'm working on getting the footage and I also have some projects to do on my boyfriend's car, which is that green EJ coupe that some of you may have seen me post on Instagram. But in any case, I am here today to give you an update on my tuck radiator and also to tell you about my new swirl pot. For those of you who don't know, I installed a tuck radiator a couple of months ago, which I did a video on it, so if you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. I'll leave a link down below. So before I installed the tuck radiator, my engine temps were consistently between 205 to 208 degrees Fahrenheit. And on hot days, it would get up to about 220 degrees, which at that point, the Honda would throw a check engine light for overheating. After I installed the tuck radiator, my engine temperatures were consistently between 187 degrees to 194 and it would get up to 194 and then when the thermostat would open and cycle, it would drop back down to 187. But on longer drives, the temp would go up to about 203 and I quickly realized that I had a coolant leak and because it was losing coolant is why it started to get up higher and higher. But it would never go past 205, which is what my old radiator setup was consistently running at. So I realized that my radiator cap was leaking from the cap. And even after I bought a new cap, it was still doing the same thing. I got worried and I thought that it could be my head gasket that went, which last year, I pulled a head stud and that's exactly what happened. I was getting pressure in my coolant system which was blowing it past the radiator cap and filling up the coolant reservoir. So I pulled the cams and checked the torque on the head studs which they were fine. I wasn't having any other telltale signs like the milky oil cap or you know any traces of oil in the coolant or coolant in the oil. So I didn't think that that was a problem. So I contacted k and let them know and after some back and forth and you know questions, 
they decided to send me out a replacement upper portion of the filler neck. But by that time, I had done some research and I came across what's called a swirl pot. So the function of a swirl pot is to help remove air from the cooling system. There's a swirl effect that's created inside of the swirl pot that helps remove the air from the coolant or water, whichever you run, before it returns back into the rest of the cooling system. If you had problems with bleeding your system and problems with air pockets trapped in your system, then the swirl pot will help remove the air from the cooling system. Especially for tough radiators, they are sometimes a little difficult to bleed because of the position that they're at, they're lower than the engine is. So sometimes you can have difficulties getting the air out of the system. After researching swirl pots, I had a vision of a design and the placement and I found a company by the name of Track Tough that has a DIY swirl pot. So I reached out and I asked if they could do the welding for me because I don't know any good aluminum welders in my area. So I drew a design of what I wanted and I sent it to them. And they came back at me and told me that my design was not gonna be functional and that it would basically be just a filler pot. And my reason for wanting this is so that it could be functional. So I had to compromise on my original design um, because I really wanted it to be functional. And if I'm not mistaken, my swirl pot was the first B-series swirl pot that Track Tough did, but I am super pleased with the final outcome. When I received it and I put it on the car, I was so happy of how the placement turned out and how the welds and how the piping swirls around the outside of the pot. Shout out to Rob at Tracta for being patient with me and my vision to come up with this work of art. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful to anyone out there that might be interested in getting a tuck radiator and that may have wanted to know what the actual results are with upgrading from a traditional radiator setup to a tuck radiator setup. And also I hope that it's helpful to anyone who might be thinking about getting a swirl pot. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, please leave that in a comment down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out whenever I upload new videos.